I'm Beverly. And I'm Sonia. And today we are dishing with you from Old Glory, located at 3139 M Street Northwest in Georgetown. And there's a lot of glory here at Old Glory. <laughs> in fact, that's what this platter is called. Uh, we've got chicken, we've got collard greens, we've got ribs, we've got kielbasa and pork, brisket, brisket ah, And for the vegetarians, you know, a little succotash. Yes, absolutely. And cornbread with honey peach butter. That's right. Ooh, don't forget the frickles. So and good. don't forget the frickles. Oh, how can we forget the frickles? It's what frickles. we are enjoying the, the most. Fried pickles. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. And you're probably getting a little thirsty right about now, <laughs> so leave some room for the 102 kinds of bourbons that you can try. If you try it within a year, you get your name commemorated on a plaque so you can remember your name after 102 bourbons. Gotta love all American barbecue. Absolutely, and it's authentic bourbon and barbecue. And we're dishing with Roger Gassman. He is the curator and producer of a very cool exhibit coming to the Corcoran called Pump Me Up. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Okay, Pump Me Up. Yep. There are so many things that you could say about that and make it fun and, and, uh, and laughable, but uh, talk about what it really means for this, uh, for this exhibit. Pump Me Up is the name of a very well-known go-go song by Trouble Funk. Uh -huh. And uh, we called Big Tony from Trouble Funk and we said, hey, we want to name this exhibit Pump Me Up and do we have your blessing? He said yes. Uh -huh. And um, the show is a great collection of DC subculture of the 1980s. Uh -huh. Go-go music, punk rock, hardcore, graffiti, all kinds of ephemera, all kinds of fine art, uh -huh. globe posters if you're around DC from you know, the 60s mm -hmm. through the mid 90s, the uh -huh. day globe posters you saw stapled to every building advertising shows. It's just a very large collection and it's a non-traditional show for the Corcoran. You walk into the show and you walk into the atrium, you're in the show and then into the rotunda, mm -hmm. into the Tyler Gallery down the hallway. It's just a huge, huge collection of ephemera photos and art. What was the inspiration? The, ins <laughs> the show came about while I was working on the documentary The Legend of Cool Disco Dan. I've been working on that documentary on and off since 2004, researching it beforehand, and we just kept digging up more and more ephemera, more and more photos, more and more great DC artifacts, and the Corcoran had already supported Disco Dan by acquiring one or a few of his pieces from me in 2000. To, and they had them in their permanent collection. They've shown them twice. So the Corcoran already liked Dan. The Corcoran already liked that era of DC. Mm -hmm. And I had a movie coming out and I had all this stuff. So we figured it would be a perfect marriage. And uh, took a few years of working back and forth with mm -hmm. them. And uh, they agreed it would be a good thing for them, good mm -hmm. thing for me, uh -huh. a good thing for the other contributors, and we did it. All my friends who are music lovers and filmmakers have been raving about your work and, and this exhibit and why everybody should go. So if, if you don't know anything about this music and this culture mm -hmm. and disco dance, then why should you come out and see this exhibit? People that move to D.C., in the 2000s, even in the late 90s, I don't think I have any idea what true DC was, what H Street used to look like before it looks like now, what 14th and U used to look like before it looks like now, even what Georgetown used to look like before it looks like now. So it's a great history lesson of DC that wasn't so far away from mm -hmm. here, but it's also just a great memory. Uh, so many people that are from DC that have come to the show, uh, you know, I'm not exaggerating when I say dozens of people have come up to me and said they cried or they can't even give me a good um, response to the show. They can't give me a good critique. They can't tell me what their favorite thing is, what we missed. They were just like, it was so emotional because they can associate with so many things or it's such a, a good memory for them. It takes them right back to their, exactly. their youth. Now you said very it was a cool. non-traditional show for the Corcoran, which is very true. But how, how have people, I mean, you talked about how people viewed the documentary, mm -hmm. but what kind of response are you getting to the exhibit at the Corcoran? We're getting a great response to the exhibit at the Corcoran. You know, I say it's non-traditional because most of the Corcoran exhibits, you know, you walk in and they're in one of their traditional galleries. When you walk into the Corcoran, you're in the atrium, and the walls of the atrium normally don't have much on them, if anything, and that these walls have the show on them. You know, the Steps to Nowhere, which is a very cool architecture thing, right, when you walk in the Corcoran on the left that most people don't think about. It's a lot of times it's just coat racks. We built it out so it looks like a built, uh, boarded up building from oh, wow. DC from the 80s, you know. Ooh. It's kind of a fun photo op, but it's full of globe, day globe posters, old go-go graffiti, all kinds of different things. So it's a, it's a non-traditional show and really just the sense you walk straight into it. I mean, museums are what 
is one of the things Washington is really known mm -hmm. for. So did you have any sort of pull and push when you were trying to create this very different feel in a museum environment? Um, I worked closely with Sarah Newman, the contemporary curator there, and the biggest lesson or, uh, or, or thing that was really, we went back and forth was, we are in a museum, so of course we need to respect that we're in a museum, so you can't just fold it full of album covers and you know, some photos you found. And Turn up some music and be like, done. <laughs> and something like that, but you know, I'm a, I'm a curator and I've done, I have museum experience, a lot of gallery experience, and you know, so it was a good challenge, you know, find true real art objects. But you know, you could show a photo of this band, a hundred people shot this band, a thousand people shot this band. Who are the two people that shot this band that won a Pulitzer Prize? Who are the two people that shot this band that are in other galleries or other museums? And how can their photos relate to it to make sure there is, you know, quote unquote, real art in a way on the walls? Not that the other items aren't real art, but uh, you know, uh, artists that are already uh, associated with museums. Do you think that exhibits of like pop culture and, and album covers and things like that, do you think that that's kind of the, where museum going is going? Because Muse museums need to do modern shows like this because it's no uh, secret that museum audiences are dying off Museums are getting stuffy, and they're not modern. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, there's of course a lot of exceptions to that rule, and a lot of people are have realized that and are doing new and cool stuff. Mocha in Los Angeles that I've worked with is doing a lot of really new, awesome things. But so many people that came through the Corcoran opening night a week or so ago said, "I've walked by this building a million times. I've never come inside. Mm. Um, I've been there giving tours the last week." So many people that I've run into say, I've never been in here. I thought this place was closed. I never paid attention to it. Wow. So it's giving new life. Shows like this do give a lot of new life to museums. I have to, go ahead, sorry. Um, I have to ask, when you, whenever you mention Go-Go, everybody in this town thinks of the late Chuck Brown. Sure. What do you have in the exhibit from him? We have a lot of great stuff from Chuck Brown, starting with a really, really cool old contact sheet of Chuck Brown and the Soul Searchers from the late 70s that's never been seen before. Uh -huh. um, some really great Dayglo Globe posters of his. Um, really great photography that's never been seen from this great British photographer, Derek Riggers, we dug up. But one of the prime pieces a lot of people have been coming to the museum to see of Chuck Brown's is his red leather jacket from the 80s. We have that. The family got it to us. Oh, that and is that so people, cool. People have been coming to see that. So you're born and raised in Bethesda. Now you live in Los Angeles? Yes. I moved to Los Angeles in 2004, but I came back all the time while we were working on this movie, and I've been here now for... Maintaining your love of DC. Five weeks. Exactly. <laughs> ma maintaining it. So it's always been inside you to make this film? We've been working on it constantly since I left. I've been doing research on it before, and um, you know, a lot of people hated on me for leaving. Why are you leaving? <laughs> how are you, how are You're you, bringing something how back you, with you. Exactly, but I came back with something up bigger than people here had been doing that work here. So. so tell us a little bit more about how everyone can see this exhibit, how long it's going to be running. Mm -hmm. Go to the Corcoran. Uh, the Corcoran website, corcoran.org, has information. The museum is open every day except Monday and Tuesday. It's through April 7th. There's a lot of really good programming going on. Um, doing a talk there tomorrow night with Ian Mackay. Um, and the documentary, how the do you see that? The documentary you can't see right now. We did six sold out shows at the AFI. Oh. The last one was yesterday. And uh, there's a lot of demand of people wanting to see it in the city right now, so we're figuring out what we're going to do next. All right, well, we'll keep our ears open to see what happens with that. Thanks right. so much, Roger, for being with us. You're welcome. As always, thank you for being with us. Follow us on Twitter and be our fan on Facebook as well, and we'll see you next time right here on The District Dish.